where do you guys come down in terms of amount of protein that we should be having? Because there's some research to suggest, yes, if we, you know, reach the, the magic 1.6 grams of protein intake per kilogram of body weight per day, that's going to maximize our benefits of exercise. But then there's other people who say, well, actually, no, we want a, a lower amount of protein because um, we don't, um, you know, ha having too much protein is going to cause other problems in, in the future. So I'm really curious to, to pick both of your brains. Where do you come down in terms of what the literature suggests we should do with protein? Yeah, I have a number of um, videos where I interviewed uh, researchers that specialize in this area. Uh, I am persuaded that, number one, that the RDAs are kind of uh, on the low end of things. And this idea that having low protein is beneficial and that having that increasing your protein is detrimental for aging, I'm not convinced of that. I've never seen any compelling evidence of that. This goes back a little bit to this question that we were talking about of the animal versus plant protein. And really, I don't think the barrier is even between animal and, and plant because, for example, several types of dairy I would put on the side of where we consistently see benefits. Fatty fish, we consistently see benefits. So it's a little more nuanced than just plant versus animal. But I don't think it's amount of protein. I think it's the source of the protein that's the key. And because the sources of protein in Western societies tend to be overwhelmingly not the best. Uh, that's probably why we see this correlation with higher levels of protein being detrimental. But when you in most of these studies, when you separate by source of protein, you don't see, for example, if it's protein from fish or protein from legumes or protein from some source of dairy like yogurt, those uh, detrimental links largely, if not entirely, go away. And you sometimes even see a benefit uh, with the some source of protein uh, being increased. So yeah, I have never seen a convincing scientific argument that increasing protein is detrimental per se. I think this becomes even more important after a certain age, after say 65, because of anabolic resistance. If you're 20 or 30 and you're at one gram of protein per kilo body weight and you're not lifting a ton of weights and trying to maximize hypertrophy, you're probably fine with that amount. Uh, if you can go a little higher, if you want to go a little higher, that's that's that may be a little better, but you're probably going to be fine around one if that's what you're eating. Uh, but as you get older, it becomes more and more of a stretch. And so because of anabolic resistance, if you're hovering around one or 0.8, uh, it becomes more of an issue. And so I think the older you are, the more it makes sense to prioritize protein and the less, I think, uh, this concern of the source matters. I think when you're younger and middle-aged, the priority is to avoid exposure to risk factors for chronic disease in the long run. But the older you are, 70, 80, 85, the less I'm worried about exposure to, you know, saturated fats or cholesterol level. And the, I think it tilts more towards the sarcopenia and the falls. And for people who have difficulty getting protein, whether it's because their appetite goes down with age or their absorption capacity goes down with age, I would tilt more towards just get in whatever protein you can uh, eat uh, so that you avoid the sarcopenia and these these issues that are, uh, are going to be a bigger threat than the long-term exposure, which you've already passed that phase. Yeah, that's that's a fantastic answer. I, it it just strikes me as a, a bit comical because it's it's exactly that's exactly the type of answer that's incredibly nuanced and and thought through where you think to yourself okay the types of proteins the sources of proteins even the time of in, in your life that you're consuming proteins change how you should take protein so so you know the, this idea that you know protein is bad or protein is good just completely melts in the face of just, and that's just one conversation to be had. I mean, once you start piling on other, uh, other factors, I mean, when you think of like exercise, for example, that's going to change how protein is being used. Uh, it's going to be allocated to the musculature. It's going to be allocated to the ligaments, the tendons, the, the bones that we talked about earlier. So I guess my perspective is I don't really have an extremely convincing argument of this. I think a lot of this 
argument that I'm about to go into is based off of some of the work by Walter Longo and, and some other researchers that have looked at protein, the effect that it might have on like IGF-1. And, you know, now we're getting into some of these mechanisms and whatnot. And it's true that once you start teasing out like protein sources and the effect that they have on longevity and uh, health and whatnot, you know, maybe that kind of accounts for a lot of what we, a lot of the arguments that some of the longevity researchers against high protein uh, might might put forward. But I haven't looked enough into that. So the the way that I've been thinking about it, and this could very well change in the future, is that I think about aging. I prioritize health span over uh, extreme longevity. So you can think of health span or you can think of lifespan and they are intermingled very closely up to a point and then there's kind of a, a divergence point in my mind where you can start to try to optimize lifespan your life is going to be pretty miserable if you do uh, mainly because it is focused on like the the lower proteins calorie deficits like long term it's it's basically kind of like the the brian johnson style of anti-aging on the other hand most people tend to focus on health span and with good reason because you want to live a long healthy life you want to live a life where you are functional throughout your life so in that scenario yeah you do probably want to bump up your protein not to you know, inordinate numbers or anything. But if you are increasing your protein intake and on top of that, uh, you're exercising, now you're driving that protein intake into useful uh, useful areas that are actually going to promote your health uh, long-term. So, you know, I think most people fall into that camp. There may be a few exceptions where they're, they're just focused on trying to extend their lifespan like uh, Brian. Um, but I think for the most part, I, th I don't think we need to worry about protein too much in the Western world from, you know, eating too little. Uh, but I also don't think that we need to be cramming protein into, into our mouths uh, to the point where we're consuming, you know, well beyond this 1.6 grams per, per kilogram, which again is, a, is another metric that's a little bit debated, but um, yeah, I think if you're exercising and if you're even within a pretty wide range, a little bit above the RDA, if you're not exercising, but if you're exercising, you want to consume a little bit more. So to facilitate recovery and to facilitate your, the, the benefits that you would get from exercise. And ultimately, if you were to compare that to in a parallel universe to the version of yourself where you don't consume that protein and you don't exercise, you're going to be far, far better uh, for it. The other thing that I'd just add to that is, um, say, for example, people that want to, they come to the clinic and they want to lose weight. Um, and we all know about the obesity epidemic. Um, one of the things that, that we encourage patients to do, uh, and this is what the clinical guidelines recommend, is to try and aim for a higher protein intake. Um, and the reason for that is that it, there is some evidence to suggest that a higher protein intake makes you feel fuller. And also for people that manage to lose weight, there's a, um, a couple of trials showing that if a higher protein intake actually helps you maintain that weight loss. So that that picking up on the discussion about health span versus lifespan, I think a lot of people would would if would would choose to be a healthy weight um, and and have a higher amount of protein in their diet to achieve that healthy weight rather than trying to shoot for some you know potential uh, you know longevity gain.